A friend of mine was telling me a saint is coming to town and you can receive a blessing. This news out of the blue one day made Carol Billingsley very, very excited. Yes, ever. And I go out loud, I'm going, and I'm going every day. <laughs> and the object of Carol's enthusiasm? <laughs> How much you love mom? So much. So much. Mama. <laughs> Sky high. <laughs> it's Indian Saint Amma Shri Karunamai, who has been visiting America from India for 20 years. And every day we got to see Amma and she would touch our heads coming in and touch our heads going out. And then she would walk in and touch us. And then we would have our little flowers from our garden, you know, like this big. Uh -huh. You know, we didn't know. We were, we just, you know, <laughs> like this. And she touched my head and I felt like my head hit the ground and honestly my head hit the floor and it never came up. She had me. Welcome to Soul Journeys and to the outpouring of love and affection of Amma Shri Karunamai as seen through the eyes of Carol Billingsley. This interview was recorded in Forsyth, Georgia on July 13th, 2019. Okay. Carol Billingsley, welcome to Soul Journeys. Thank you. It's Thank all, you, Ted. It's such a delight to be able to talk to you because you have such a wonderful working relationship with Amish Riku and Amai. But before we get to that, what brought you to her attention? What, how did you become aware of Amma? A friend of mine was telling me a saint is coming to town and you can receive a blessing. And it was at a time, it was at a very critical time in my life. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need a blessing. <laughs> and she said, you'll be able to go up before her and ask for something. And I'm like, okay, where is it? So I go and it's at the Hindu temple of Atlanta and there's thousands of people. And I am so awkward and I feel so out of place. And never been in a Hindu temple before? Never been in a okay. Hindu temple before. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna write down my questions. So I'm writing everything on this sheet of paper. But we were foster parents at the time, and we had this child that we had had for four years, and it looked like, you know how you can just feel things? Mm -hmm. I felt the tide shift. The judge, the everybody but me and Marianne and the defects worker were hoping that he was going to go back to the mother, which was not a very good situation. And I, I was panicked. I was panicked. And so I went up before Ama and I said, please, if it's for his highest good, please, let him stay with us. And she looked at me and she, she rubbed my head and she said, I will vanquish it. <laughs> and I did not know what that meant. But you had an idea. Well, I had an idea, something good. <laughs> and so I stayed that day. I went back home every Friday. We'd been taking him to be reintroduced to the mother because he didn't know her. Every Friday for a year, they had showed up and talked together. That I went on Friday to see Amma. The next Friday, I'm driving him in to see his mother. And I get a call from Deep Max and said, oh, the mother has canceled for the day. I'm like, okay. And they said, and by the way, we have an infant that you can have if, uh, that, that needs a home. And can you take him? So I said, I'll let you know. So we never heard from the mother again. She never showed up again to any of the meetings. And then months later when the rights were terminated and the judge was sitting before everyone and Marianne went in, because I, I didn't have the guts to go in. I, I was just a mess. And, and the judge said if the mother had showed up, he would have given her to him. So he would said, have let me guess, he vanquished the situation. That she never showed up again. And now he's 16 here, oh, gorgeous, amazing. and just amazing. So where were you on the spectrum of spiritual growth, spiritual understanding at the time you met her to have all this happen? I had been on a spiritual path for my whole life. Actually, chiropractic really brought me to a very strong... Your fourth generation chiropractor. Yes, fourth generation. Wow. And so it's just, I mean, it's in the cells. It's, it, <laughs> it's, it's, un, it's unbelievable. It, uh, it, it thrills me every day when I get to work on people. I love it. 
And so we had been on the path and I'd been on another spiritual path with another guru for 20 years. And so I had, I so had an understanding, yeah, sure but I didn't have that experience. I'd never seen in, from the Indian version. And it mm -hmm. was so amazing to me, but it was foreign to me. And so it just took me, I, I just felt like Amma just brought me forward from wherever I was. She just brought me into becoming like, this is kind of funny, but just a functional human being. Like she just gave me so many things that I didn't have. And it, it really just transformed my whole life. And then I, I, then we got that child and then he was very, very sick. So we, the baby, we got the baby, we'd been online for, we waited for 15 years. And so one week after we see Amma, they call us with a baby and, and then we did say yes. And then he was sick. And, and so it took us years to become okay. So we didn't sleep and, you know, we, and every year I would see this email, Amma's children. And I thought that meant little children. So I'd go, oh, isn't that nice? Oh, I love her. I, I should go see her. And then it, it just never happened. And then I'm at an Indian restaurant and on the wall, there is a picture of Shiva. Mm -hmm. And I had always loved the Rudram because I'd been on another path. Uh -huh. And when I saw that, I ran to the wall in the Indian restaurant. I'm by myself, right? <laughs> I rip that off the wall and I start jumping up and down. I'm like, 11 times. I didn't know what an Aati Rudram was. I'm like, 11 times for 11 days. I started jumping up and down. The I said, I'm going. The Stream Center. First, yes, ever. And I go, out loud, I'm going, and I'm going every day. And I went you were home. There. I know it. I met you guys. We met everybody. And we took Gabriel and he was um, six or eight at the time and he could he could go in for a little bit, but not that yeah. much. So a lot of the time we spent outside throwing the football. <laughs> and we didn't mind because of that the ground just yeah. pulsed. And it was just it it was it was the most transforming thing I had ever experienced. And every day we got to see Amma and she would touch our heads coming in and touch our heads going out. And every day I felt myself, <laughs> and then I'm like this, right? And then one day she walks in and she had done the Pratishtapana with um, the Baba Temple, with the Baba Murti, and that was beyond belief. And then she would walk in and touch us. Then we would have our little flowers from our garden, you know, like this big. Uh -huh. You know, we didn't know. We were, we just, you know, <laughs> like this. And she touched my head. And I felt like my head hit the ground. And honestly, my head hit the floor and it never came up. She had me. That was it. That was totally it. It and sounds then, like your familiarity with all these uh, rhythms and projects and ways and means would require somebody to be to necessarily be a Hindu. Are you a Hindu? No. No. It's not a requirement. It is not a requirement. In fact, it, 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 it's irrelevant. All we have to do is love God and, and love Amma. And how easy is that? <laughs> it was so easy. And so I didn't have to know anything or do anything. I had just had to be there and let my heart go. And not everybody has exactly the same reaction. Some are even more expanded. Yes. How would you describe Amma to somebody who's never heard of her before? Well, she's pure love. Pure love. And the way that I describe her, because I tell every patient I have and everybody I know, I try to bring them to the blessing. I, br I try to bring, I have people coming today. I just say she is a walking saint. And how, I mean, what would you do to be able to walk in front of a walking saint? Well, you've got this 20 years. Did you say 20 or 10 years of experience before coming 20? to 20. So that's a long time. It was and a long time. Considering where you were many years before Amma, uh, how far have you seen your own personal transformation carry you? Like I can't even describe it. Like I'm, I'm totally a different, I, I, I was basically a miserable person. Mm -hmm. 
I, I was in misery. So many people around all of us. Yes, and my mind was so, it, it was just, I was, I was almost crushed by my mind. Mm -hmm. And after Amma, and just so much learning and so much goodness, and I, I have the tools to bring myself out of that now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just so thankful. I, I feel like I've turned into kind of myself. <laughs> really, goal, honestly, I, I feel like myself. You I feel first figure out who yourself is, and it th sounds like you have done this. I'm gonna put a big emphasis on meditation. I always say there's two classes of meditators: those who really get it, and then there's the class I'm in. It takes a long time to get half a mile down the road meditating. How about you? Where do you fit in on that? I would say I'm fair. Mm -hmm. Not that great, but I feel like I'm getting better. And I learned this weekend that Amma wants us to graduate out of the first grade. <laughs> and so that gave, that gave me something. And so I feel like I can take all this amazing input and apply it better. So I feel like I can apply it. So it sounds like all the transformations that have occurred in your life, in part have been because of meditation, in part have been because you've seen miracles happen, in part yes. it's because Amma has walked into your life, the real McCoy, the genuine embodiment of love, and, and, and you said yes to all of this. Yes, yes. Last word is yours about Ooh. the whole spectrum. This is Guru Panima weekend, 2019, when people come to honor their teacher, what does that mean to you? I feel like our life has become an honoring of our teacher. I feel like we are so connected at that level to give that honoring. And I guess what I would want to say to, to, to every person is give yourself that gift and come and see her. We don't know how long we have her. We don't know. And this is an opportunity that is beyond anything I could ever imagine. And so when people go, well, it might be too far to drive, or well, it's not as far as India. Yeah, it's true. It's not. It's just do whatever you can to get to her. And you're speaking to people, I'm going to guess is my final comment, who may not even be in a position to, to know who their teacher is or feel that they've got a teacher. And I hear you saying that teachers are here for everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And what a grand and great teacher. <laughs> like, who could, it just doesn't get any better. Carol, thank you very, very much. This has just been wonderful. Mm. Jay Karunamai. Jay Karunamai. All my love. And thank you for watching Soul Journals.